Driving a motorcycle sucks. It may be small, but there are far too many nooks and crannies to get into with a towel. And if done badly, you might end up with damaged paint and a rusty chain or bolts. So instead of putting more effort in, I went looking for an easy solution in the garden section. I'm not sure if you've been able to tell by my videos or by my dedicated motorcycle cleaning wall, but I enjoy cleaning motorcycles. Especially my new bike that I'll reveal in my next video, so subscribe if you don't want to miss that. But the part I've never enjoyed or figured out the best way to do is drying the bike afterwards. The theory is simple. You take a super absorbent and super soft towel and smear it over your bike to soak up all the water that was on it. But in reality, the towel will get saturated within a few minutes and proceeds to just move the water around your bike rather than soaking it up. It's also impossible to get into every bolt head in between chain links and behind tight spaces. So after about 10 minutes, I usually just give up and come to terms with only my paintwork being dry. It's also very tempting to just let the thing air dry and not waste your time at all. However, that's not the best idea. Firstly, you're going to get water spots, which can damage your paintwork. Some bolts that have been used frequently and are therefore slightly worn down can begin to rust. Your chain can also rust if not dried. And not to mention, it's a good idea to get the water out of the links before you apply chain lube. Hence why you've seen me use compressed air to dry my chain in the past. But after doing some research, I discovered that car detailers often use blow dryers to dry cars after washing. Or the budget version, just a leaf blower. That sounded a lot more practical to me. So I ordered a giant leaf blower to be able to dry my bike in just a few seconds. Well, at least that's what I thought I ordered. But instead, I got this. It's tiny. What I ordered wouldn't even fit in here. I mean, it's definitely a blower, it's just about a quarter of the size of what I thought it would be. It looked bigger in the pictures, I promise. I think I just got leaf blower catfished. So needless to say, I was a bit upset. But only at first, because on second thought, this might be even better than I planned. It's lighter and smaller than your average leaf blower, which makes it easier to control and doesn't kill your back. It takes up a lot less space to store, meaning it can just live in a cabinet. And this kind of explains why it's so cheap. Of course, all of that only matters if it actually works well. Again, the theory here is perfect. It should be quicker than a towel because you can cover more surface area in less time. Air is basically the only way to get water out of chain links and some crevices. But this should be less damaging than compressed air on chain o-rings because there's a lot less pressure. And the best part is that you don't even have to physically touch your bike, so you can't possibly scratch it with a contaminated cloth. And in reality, most of that holds up. It's more powerful than you'd expect from such a little blower. And the rubber nozzle is nice because even if you do accidentally bump your bike, it won't scratch it. And you can bend and shape the nozzle to get into tight spaces. It's also electric, so you don't have to mix petrol for it, and it does get your bike dry. However, it wasn't as fast as I was expecting. It isn't effortless to get the bike dry like I was hoping, and it does take some time as well as a special technique. But personally, I still think it's less soul destroying than a stupid towel. To be honest, it is kind of loud if that bothers you, and there are a few other precautions to take. For starters, you need to be careful not to aim it at the ground and blast sand and dust up at your bike, which might scratch it and the air coming into the blower should ideally be filtered just in case, especially if you use it in a dusty environment. 
And I hope that it goes without saying that you probably shouldn't just go and grab your dusty old leaf blower that's been sitting in your shed for a decade. Because after years of dusty leaf blowing, that might sandblast your bike. Nevertheless, I'm going to give my leaf blower, which turned out not to be a leaf blower, a try for the next few months to see if it does make bike drying easier and less of a headache. And for once, buying the wrong thing from the internet actually turned out better than planned. But anyway, let me know how you dry your bike after washing it or if you've ever given this method a try or if you have any other ideas. Hit the like button if you enjoyed this random video and I'll see you on the next ride.